Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, guys. Welcome to Sundays in the Studio with Sandy. Like I say, it's a lot of S's, right? Good morning, Barbara and Anne and Mary and Molly Ann and Mary Ann and Suzanne and hello, Judy Thacker over on YouTube. So we're streaming both on my Sandy McTeer Designs page. If you're here, welcome, welcome. And if you're on my YouTube channel, welcome. Um, if you have not, would love for you to hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification so that you'll be notified when I go live. But we're streaming on both, which is exciting. Now I just need to get Instagram added, right? <laughs> and we'll hit all the bases. Um, so good afternoon, guys. So it is three o'clock here in middle Georgia. Let me know where you're watching from, where you're viewing from. Hello, Karen. So glad you found me. Hello, Linda Johnson. Hi, Sandra Schmidt. Hello, Sandra Malone. Hope you had a wonderful birthday yesterday. It is your birthday week, your birthday month, right? Hello, hello, guys. And it is um, my friend Laura Haberstraw's birthday today, one of our members from our membership group as well. So overcast but mildly warm. Ah, in Central Coast, California. I need to come up your way, Judy. Got here at the beginning instead of the end. <laughs> well, Peg, thank you for being here. Thanks all y'all for being here. All y'all, how Southern was that? Um, hello, Linda from Michigan and Beth and Liz Garcia. Good to see you on. Uh, Liz is teaching, if I'm not mistaken, you are teaching an Art Waves class, right? I remember I saw the post with a beautiful picture. Um, so you'll have to check that out. Art Waves, I should, I'll put that information on my page um, later today about the Art Waves convention. Unfortunately, I'm not joining in this time because a little overloaded, <laughs> which isn't surprising for me. I tend to overload myself. So um, with you know, projects and things to do. So the hard part is that you can't see the comments on Facebook. Definitely come our way. I will, I will. Yes, Judy, no doubt. I know it would be nice if you could see them on both, right? So I do have a dual screen up right now so that I can at least see comments on both. Um, not sure where I would put an Instagram. Maybe I have to get one of those big, huge screens, you know, that kind of arcs. <laughs> and be able to have all the different um, pages up on. I thought so, Liz. I love your project. I um, I will make sure that I share that as well. It's pretty. Hello, Pat. Oh, someone just messaged. They'll have to wait. And the Michigan Heartland Artists. Hello from a dreary Michigan. Sorry to hear that. It is gorgeous this weekend. So when we got home last weekend, you know, we uh, came home from Miami and Key West and we were cold. <laughs> um, I think in the evenings it was still in the 40s and then during the day it was like 63, which isn't cold. Um, we had just been in weather that was 80 plus, 85 to 90 plus. Um, so, you know, it's all about getting used to what you're, what you're part of. I try to watch muted on my iPad. Muted me, J Judy. <laughs> mute me. I want to mute me sometimes too. So, hello, Denise from Alberta. I never know which one to watch. Molly Ann, I say which watch, whichever one works best for you. You know, if you get a better um, picture and sound on Facebook, watch it on Facebook. If you get a better picture and sound on YouTube, watch it on YouTube. Great thing about YouTube is that you can stream it to like your smart uh, TV. So, not that I need to be any bigger, but. Um, I do love watching videos on my big screen TV. Hello, Carol Craig. Carol Craig, you have, when is your first, um, do you have a class coming up online? If you do, leave it in the comments for me, uh, like a little freebie thing. If y'all don't know Carol Craig, um, good friend of mine, she does. The two are not in sync. Right, Judy? They aren't in sync. <laughs> um, one of them is slower than the other, Facebook or YouTube. Anyway, Carol Craig, um, an amazing artist, just an all-around incredible lady, um, but she does a lot. She paints, she teaches painting, but she also teaches um, mud, which is a paste created by Margot Clark, and um, Carol is phenomenal at it. 
me, not so much. It does take some practice um, and just does creative, gorgeous, beautiful stuff. So um, Carol, leave that in the comments for me. Hello, Elizabeth from Buffalo, New York. I cannot wait to be back up y'all's way um, in June. I just sent the selections in, some things that you might see a little behind me. Um, maybe that way. <laughs> Maybe that way, um, but I'm excited to go back. So yes, and um, Christy and I just saw that Carol, she does have a fireside chat tonight, but I won't be able to join, unfortunately. So yeah, y'all, you're so welcome, Carol. Make sure you put that um, information for your page, for your, um, any class that you're gonna be teaching. Go ahead and put that in the comments. One stroke taught me how to use acrylics. Right, and she is. She is, she is. Yes, there is a lag on YouTube. I think I saw um, someone said that. Was it Chris Abola? Hello, Chris. Hello, Bev. Hello, Claudette. I have so much to share with you guys today. Uh, um, hi, Ellie. Hi, Barbara. So, hello, Henriette. And let's see, Brenda and Denise. I don't know. I think I might have mentioned it last week. I was watching this other lady on live, and she goes, you know, and she left a comment uh, she didn't leave it to me. This other person in somewhere left a comment on this lady's live and said, um, I come here to watch you craft, not to say hello to 100 people. <laughs> what are you going to do but laugh, right? Right? Um, oh, Sandra Schmidt, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. So happy to hear my room is waiting. Um, I love staying at your house last time. Watching on Facebook today, since YouTube lags a little, right? It does. So, thank you, Chris, for putting that. Hello, Kathy Baldwin and Char uh, Charlene Sexton and Phyllis and Linda and Karen. I'll say hi to all y'all. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Karen Wilson. I saw your um, April Fool's email. I just haven't responded. Funny, very funny. Um, Sandy is a fantastic teacher. So talented. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to see you in your beautiful smile today. Good to see you too. Thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Um, is she not Elizabeth? She's just the best. Sandra, y'all's, I mean, y'all's group is just amazing. I cannot wait to be back in Buffalo again, um, and paint with y'all. Hello, Ann Parcher. Good to see you on. All right, guys. So it is 3.08. I'm going to give two more minutes, a couple more minutes for everyone to jump on. So make sure you comment, like, and share. You'll be entered into the drawing. Um, I won't do the drawing until next. Let me think. I'm out of town. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I might post it on Wednesday. In fact, you know what? I'm going to post it on Wednesday. I'm going to make Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm going to make myself a note right now, because if I don't, I'll forget. Um, but I'm going to announce the winners for the drawing, the giveaways that I have for today. I'm going to do those on Wednesday sometime. I'll post them here. I'll also post them in the chat comments on YouTube. Um, and then you can just send me your information, and I'll get it off to you. But I do go out of town on Thursday. So excited for my first show um, I already taught my first in-person seminar last week, the week before, in Port St. Lucie. The most amazing time. Great ladies. It was nice to be back in person. I love teaching online. I love being able to reach people in India and Australia and England and uh, Norway and, you know, Denmark, all these other different places, Colombia. Um, but it's so nice to be in person. And so my first in-person seminar, and then this week I go... For my first show with DecoArt, I'm going to NAMTA Creativation, which is um, the NAMTA's uh, fine art show that used to happen in the beginning of the year, um, like springtime, and then Creativation has evolved from the Craft and Hobby Association to other things. Then it was Creativation. Now they've joined forces. So it is in Orlando, and I will be there demonstrating some DecoArt product that I'm going to share a little bit with you guys today got my package just love the fun things you put in the package and thank you for the little bunny Kathy you're so very welcome 
Um, I love throwing in those little extra things when I can. Hope I can make the buffalo. So do I, Patty Mae. What a cute name. Love your name. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. So hello, Mara Chu. So good to see you on. Um, and so glad that we were able to connect again after your snafu with Facebook. So hello, Robin Wilson and Linda and Lori and Melissa Hogan from Massachusetts. Good to see you on. All right, guys, it's 310. I said I was going to get started at 310 because I have tons to cover. So first thing today, we're going to be doing my um, Stargazer Lily. This is the, let's see, we did the Daffodil. Let me just show you. Where do I have these? We did the Daffodil first. Um, so I'm not going to do the background. I'll explain what I did, but you can go back and watch any of these lessons on my YouTube channel. Um, so first one we did in this series, there are six right now. There might be eight because there's two other things I want to do, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, so first was the daffodil. All right. And then was the tulip. So that was the second in my series. And then the third, we did, um, an iris. So a wild iris. And then when I taught this one online, um, remember I said, oh, it kind of needs something. I didn't put anything on this one. So I went ahead and I put a dragonfly live while we were doing the live lesson. Um, I have included that in the pattern packet. So if you have a pattern packet that you purchased from my website, um, which I'll pop up right there, you can get the instructional packet, use that code right there, it'll get you a discount. Um, but it has the line drawing for the um, dragonfly as well in that e-packet. So all of these have instructional packets, all right? And then the next lesson we did was um, the one last week. Let me get rid of that. Hello. Um, last week we did my calla lily. And then today my stargazer lily. And I am doing a hydrangea. And it's going to be very much in the colors of like our iris but a little bit maybe more on the blue side or the purple side. I'll show you how you can make it more purple, more blue, depending on your decor. Um, but the two other flowers that I'm itching to paint in this series, uh, Delphinium and Hollyhocks. So we'll see. Um, I remember I taught Hollyhocks at a seminar and someone said, those remind me of like my grandma's flowers, like old lady flowers. And I'm like, well, consider me an old lady then because when I lived in England, we had the most gorgeous hollyhocks um, in the garden from the 14th, in the 14th century coach house um, that we were living in at the time. Because my husband was military, we were stationed in England, lived there for six years, absolutely loved it, would go back in a heartbeat. So, <laughs> all right, added so much with the dragonfly. Right, Barbara, I agree. It needed, it needed something. I just wasn't sure what it was. Um, and so added the dragonfly. So the first one had a bee. We have a couple butterflies. We have a dragonfly. The dragonfly might have to reappear um, on the delphiniums or on the hollyhocks. We'll see. So um, we'll love hollyhocks. They're beautiful. I agree. And I taught them. I loved the um, design that I taught in Vegas a few years ago. I want to say maybe three, four years ago. Uh, they were along the pink to white color, and uh, that was in water-soluble oils. So I would love to redo it in acrylics. So I'll keep you guys posted. Love hollyhocks, love hollyhocks. That's good to hear. Okay, well, you know what? Guess what? <laughs> in our series of six might be eight, like I said, with hollyhocks and delphiniums. Um, when we lived in England as well, we had hollyhocks, but we had the most gorgeous, big, like stalks of delphiniums, if you're not familiar with them. They're along that purple line. So you need to do a painting of the English cottage. <sighs> yes, Bev. Funny enough, I used to do those a lot. Um, and I taught my local students, I did an English thatched roof cottage. Um, my sister was in town, Linda. She took that class, which I think is the only time she's ever painted. Um, but I used to do English cottages on ceramics when I would sell those overseas, like at the USO and gift shops and things like that. So I really should do, cause I have got gorgeous reference photos, um, from England. I should do a thatched cottage. 
I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Get my piece of paper again. All right, because I'll forget. As much as I say I'll remember, I'll forget. Even on the lives, I'm like, okay, I'll show that to you guys later. And then after I get done, sometimes I'm like, I completely forgot to show them what I was talking about. It's just, you know. Had huge hollyhock. We lived in Grass Valley. Yeah, they're, I love hollyhocks. They're so pretty. And they attract bees and butterflies and um, everything. So, and me too, my grandmother taught me. I used to to make dolls with the holly. Oh, did you? I've never seen those or heard that. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I'll have to do a cottage. All right, let's get busy because I've got so much to share with you. <laughs> so I'm going to move these things out of the way. Let me find my original lily for today so I can see what I did. Um, move these other things aside. Let's go ahead and take care of our giveaways for last week. To enter the giveaways for this week, all you have to do is like, comment, share. Wednesday mid-morning, I will announce the winners here on my Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page, and I'll also post it in the chat here on this video on YouTube. All right? So, let's see. Thatched roof sounds good. I love hydrangeas. I know I'm excited about the next um, one in this series. Hydrangeas are fun to paint. Um, it's my favorite flower, and it's also my favorite flower to paint. So um, that's just life we forget about, <laughs> right? Hello. But for me, the odor migraine. Right, Karen? I have, to, I have to kind of agree with you on there. Hello, Mickey from sunny uh, Georgia. It is beautiful in Georgia today, isn't it? Although it could be different from um, Ella J, which is in the mountains of Georgia, all the way down to Valdosta, which is in the southern. I'm smack dab in the middle of the state, and we have weather <laughs> across the board most times. So I've never heard of these dolls out of hollyhocks. I'm definitely going to have to go look those up. Hello, Cecilia. So good to see you on. And I loved your, um, you posted in the group, in my membership group, the um, daffodil and the tulip, right? I think I just saw that. I'm getting lots of people <laughs> messaging me today. So I'm loving this series as well. All right, let's get started. Like I said, have lots to share. Um, so let's do giveaways first. So last week we had three giveaways. Hello, let me move my keyboard. And thank you so much, Elizabeth, for liking, commenting, and sharing. Yes, who knew, Chris? Thanks for posting that. She just posted, y'all, a link in my um, on my Facebook. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, hello, Juliet, Juliana. Um, she just posted a link on how to make hollyhock dolls. Never heard of them. Anyway, we had three giveaways for our live last week. And um, this one was for, hello, Jolene on the road, you be safe, girlfriend, was for four of the um, M2 stencils. If you're not familiar with them, M squared is Moreau McTeer. It's a line that I have with Tracy Moreau. You can find these stencils on my website right there. But you can also find them on Tracy's website right there. Okay, so the winner of those four stencils is Joyce Gutierrez. So Joyce, I think I have your information, but if you will email me or message me, if you go to my website and click on the contact button or email me, or you have my email address, I know, um, I will get these out to you. Alrighty, and then we had two stamps. Um, so the peony cling, these are Stampendous stamps, and this, I love this stamp here. Um, looks like Crackle. Look how pretty that is. Oh, you can use paint, you can use ink. Um, anyway, so the winner of those two Stampendous 6x6 six six stamps is Lori Bellucci. So Lori Bellucci, message me and let me know your address and I will get these shipped off to you tomorrow if I get it in time. Um, in England as a child, I used to make little dolls from the big red poppies. Oh, right, Christina? So um, Christina is one of my members in my membership group and she is from England. And I, when I lived in England, our 
um, in our backyard, we had poppies, no lie, that were about the size of a dinner plate. I mean, they were huge um, and just loved, loved, loved them. So we also had um, a three quarter, a half inch, which is like a number 12 flat, and then a stencil pro brush. Um, three of my favorite go-to brushes to use all the time. And the winner of that, hello, is Miss Bev. So I don't want to butcher your last name, but let me give it a C. <laughs> So I can't say it. What is your, pronounce your last name for me, <laughs> Bev. I know you're on and I greatly appreciate you. And when I saw your name pop up on the wheel, I was excited for all of y'all. And then I thought, okay, how am I going to pronounce Bev's last name? Cezielski? Cezielski? Okay, so Bev, message me your mailing address and I will get those out to you. All righty. All right, so... We have some giveaways for this week, but let me first show you. I had some happy mail. Um, I had some happy mail from my friends over at CD Wood Cupboard Distributing. Uh, so Chris Hoy and her team, there's their um, website. I also put on there, you'll see the frame. That's the surface I'm using in this series. It's that six by 14 framed surface, comes with two parts. That's the item number. Um, and they sent me some of their new stencils that are phenomenal. Siselski, Siselski. Hopefully I said that right. Thank you so much. Hello, Heather. Good to see you on. Alrighty, so cdwood.com, they have amazing stencils. And so I got a stack of those that they sent me. This is one of my favorites. I think I shared that. I don't know if I shared it with y'all or with my membership group, but love, love, love. Um, and there's some collage, um, one with like a little postage cancellation stamp, another little border stamp. Um, this is cute with a guitar and music note and flowers. Um, love, like that brocade pattern um, with that quatrefoil and brocade. Um, they remind me of, um, oh gosh, it just left me. There's another stencil line. that. Anyway, I love all the different patterns. It makes great backgrounds in mixed media and others. So um, our giveaways might include two of those <laughs> um, because I ordered some extras. So they were sweet to send me some and I thought, okay, I have to get a couple extras. So one of the giveaways for this week's live, and again, I'll post it on Wednesday. All you have to do, like, comment, share, are two of C.D. Wood's new collage um, and pattern stencils. All right, so one lucky winner will get those and then I have a set of stamps that are my stamps actually so love this kind of little sassy um, hashtag girl is what I call her so it comes with three different stamps that one has four different stamps and that one has four different stamps so another lucky winner for those and then finally I have a set of my favorite go-to brushes for dry brushing um, so there are all four sizes of the Mezzaluna. These retail for over $50. All right, so those four brushes. And then one of my favorite new little stencil brushes in the Stencil Pro um, by Dynasty Line. This is a 3 8 stencil brush. Okay, so third winner will get those. Okay, now I know I said I had some exciting news. <laughs> and let me just pop it up right there for you. Okay. So, as I tell you guys many times on my Sunday lives, um, I have a membership group. It is a paid membership group. Now, I know there's lots of free stuffs online. Free stuffs. How's that for not an English major? <laughs> How is that? Um, I know there are a lot of free things online. There are a lot of free things and ways that you can learn. I have a membership group. It is a paid membership group. We paint three to four times a month live. I join them live three to four times a month in our private group. Um, I do either a line drawing and a list of the paints that we use. 
um, on our projects. And a lot of times they're not painting along with me. They're watching. They'll paint later. But um, have a fantastic group. It is a great, more intimate place where I get together with people that want to paint and learn from me, but also learn the way I use product, learn about new products, learn about different products, learn techniques. So three to four times a month we paint and I have over 60 lessons in the membership group. They're all recorded. So if you can't be there, you can't watch live, you can go and um, watch them at your leisure and create them at your leisure. You can um, pay monthly, you can pay yearly, which saves you money, um, but you can also cancel at any time. You're not locked in. It's not a contract. You're not locked into something, um, but we do everything and primarily we create in an art journal and let me tell you why. Doing three to four lessons a month, sharing techniques and different tips and tricks. I do a technique Thursday, a tip Tuesday um, throughout the months. We're also doing the flowers of every single month. Um, this month is daisies. I oftentimes have guests, guests, I just bit my tongue. Did you see that? Guest artist. I've had, oh my gosh, Tracy Moreau and Kathy Hansen and Deb Antonick and, um, oh my gosh, who else am I forgetting? Kat Kerr and Marley, or Marianne Andresia and, um, Oh my gosh, I'm going to forget, uh, Lana Lamb. There's, we've had guest artists on that have shared their talents and their time because they're my friend, uh, Beth Wagner. So this month we have Marco Aguilar, and he's going to be doing some fun things with water. So the other thing is quarterly we have Zoom classes that are free to my members. So a four hour, in fact, this month is a five and a half hour Zoom class that's free to my members. Um, and we are going to be doing a mixed media rooster to kind of kick off May, which is all about mixed media. So like I said, I'm gonna turn this down now so that you can see that we primarily create in an art journal so that you don't have to have 50, 60 <laughs> different surfaces um, and then I highly recommend that they take it out of the art journal if they love the piece and they want to do it on something else. So like this was a lesson. We did the cover of my art journal. I know I've shared this with you guys several times, but um, we did something on neurographic art. We did that in February um, and just different things. And along those lines, we took that lesson and I incorporated it into a lesson I had already done. Let's see if I have it. Do I have it in this art journal? Nope, I have it in this art journal. Can you tell I've got art journals everywhere? Um, you know, and incorporated it um, onto her. But again, all of these lessons, all of these line drawings, all of these ideas on how to create, um, you know, fold out pages, water droplets, um, draw. We do drawing exercises. I'm going to get out of that one because it doesn't have a lot. We just did this last week. Um, little mixed media butterfly. Since I went to the Nature Butterfly Conservatory in Key West, we did a lesson on that. Oh my goodness, so many different things. Like I said, flowers and uh, challenges. This was our January flower of the month was carnations. So basically, it is a place where I can share a little more of me, a little more of what I love to do, um, backgrounds, hello, different products to use. We use stencils, stamps. So it's art journaling, it's decorative painting, it's mixed media, all rolled into one and then some um, product you know, knowledge and learning how to use different products. Um, probably one of my favorite pages that I did with my membership group. Um, this was a challenge that they could do whatever they want. So I just provided the line drawing, gave them some suggestions, another background idea. Um, last July was all about tropical, um, love to paint glass. And, you know, just this was one of our Zoom classes. We did hibiscus. So again, it is a great place for me to be able to share more of what I love to do, different designs. A lot of these designs, as you're seeing here on the screen, are not public. I don't have a pattern packet for them. 
when I make a pattern packet for them, my members get the free pattern packet. All right, so um, this is one of our Zoom classes we did with collage using magazine pages, but incorporating paint and pen um, and different things, our word of the year. So again, it is a great place to have a compilation of all your work. I think this was a March, February or March lesson that we did. Um, did that one, actually taught it at Creativations and Painting as well. And because it was based on a lesson I did with my members, they got the free pattern packet um, to download. So again, I'm telling you all this because my membership group is now officially open. I say officially. It will close Wednesday at midnight. Wednesday at midnight. Again, monthly, yearly, um, three to four times a month create with me. This month we have a Zoom class. That right there is worth the membership cost. Um, you can go to my website. I'm going to put this information up again for you right there. You can go to my website at sandymctierdesigns.com and read a little bit more about it. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of that page um, on my website and hit the membership link, you will see some of our members' pages and some of the things that we have done. Um, it is a great supportive fantastic um, community of like-minded, eager to learn. We have members in Madrid. We have letters in, uh, members in Norway. We have members in Australia, in India, in England, all over Canada, all over the U.S. Um, so it's just a great place for us to come together. Um, our next lesson is on Tuesday. Uh, before I go out of town. And again, would love for you to join us. Right there is the information. The only thing is that discount code doesn't work on the membership group because it is a subscription-based membership that runs through um, your credit card. So you won't be able to do that through your um, with your subscription. But all product, and let me go ahead and say this, my members have a different discount code. My members get a greater discount on my website than anywhere else anyone else, um, they get a better discount. And I just do that because, again, they are taking their time and energy and money to join my group, to be with me, to, um, and that's a benefit. So, and I like to spoil them every now and then, throw something extra and free in there. So, anyway, check it out. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. You can reach me through my website, and I'll be happy to let you know more information about my membership group, okay? Again, it won't open again until the fall. So it will not open again until September. This is what, April? Can you guys believe it's already April? So can't watch due to work, bye. Oh, Judy, love that all are recorded many. Oh, I was just saying you couldn't watch now. Yes, isn't it great that all of them are recorded and you can go back as watch as many times or you can watch and, and go, oh, I missed that and rewind and um, and then pause it so that you can see how I move my brush, how I hold my brush. And guys, it isn't me just doing a video and, and recording it and sharing it with my group and not teaching. My whole thing is about teaching. I want to teach you things that I've learned. I want to teach you things maybe you don't know. I want to, hopefully, um, I want to enhance and build upon things that you already do know. Um, and again, mixed media, art journaling, decorative painting, um, just about everything, knowing what products do, how to use products, different techniques and things that you can do with products, different tips, different techniques that I get to share more um, intimately with my group. So let me know if you um, are interested in that. You can email me or you can just go to my website and sign up. So I'm going to go ahead and switch right back down here. Let's get started because I've still got stuff to share. <laughs> Try refreshing. Uh, so, Cecilia, I'm so glad you joined as well. Um, <clears throat> so, alrighty, let me go and show you. So, I said I got Happy Mail. I did. Um, I also have been playing around with, because I'm demoing the product this uh, coming weekend and next week at Creativation, NAMTA with DecoArt. And it is their water marbling. So if you go to my website, again, right there, at the very bottom of that page, you'll see a link for DecoArt. You can click on that link. It'll take you to DecoArt. That's my affiliate link. 
um, being up front. So the DecoArt water marbling, oh my gosh, this is magic. They call it magic medium. It's magic in a jar. So I'm going to be demoing this, and I'm also going to be doing some videos and some lives from there. So hopefully I'll be able to share this on my Santa Meek Care Designs page and then a little bit more with my membership group. But these are just some of the samples of things that I have done with the water marbling. Now, this is on computer paper, guys. Guess what? You can cut this into strips, use it in your art journal. You can use this, uh, decoupage it onto... Uh, a box onto wood. You can use it as a background. There's so many different things you can do with it. And then once you get done doing like your pages, this was the first one I did. And I have to say, I'm not hating it. I kind of love it. <laughs> so once you get done doing your pages and they have these combs and things that you can rake through, Loved these, loved that. I did that on, uh, had no base coat, nothing on it, piece of wood. And I dunked it into the water to get that water marbling. Look how pretty that is. However, I also love that side. Is that not fun? Now, we will be doing this in my membership group. I will be sharing how I'm going to use some of these papers in my art journal. And this is paper that you use to clean the, the top of the water off because it has this magic stuff in it to make it a little bit thicker. Um, but when you want to move on to another color palette, you can clean your water with these pieces of paper. However, I have to tell you guys, I loved these just as much. I mean, especially that one. I could so see, and doesn't that look like a, I don't know, it kind of, I can see like a whale's head, but then, <laughs> so I'm seeing things in these. Um, anyway, I am going to be using these, I know for sure. But great, great, great new product. It's so addictive. Um, in fact, I told my husband, I said, oh my gosh, I just can't stop. And he said, well, you have to stop because you got to get it. <laughs> other things done. Okay, so let's move on to our lesson today. Let's come to here. <clears throat> so what I did, again, on my um, all of the same background stencils used on my daffodil up to this project, and I will for the flowers in this series. Um, it just, it helps not having to go out and get, you know, four new stencils, two new stencils, new stamps, um, and trying to stay within some of the same um, color palette so that you, once you have your colors for one, you'll have your colors for the other. And I forgot to show you these. <gasps> okay, so these are two brushes that come with the marble, the water marbling set, but look what I did. It comes like this, and it's like a plastic, and then I water marbled those. Oh, and then I also had to do it with my fugly brush, which is the brush Tracy Moreau calls <laughs> a fugly brush, but it's a one inch encaustic brush. But look how that, that raw wood took that water marbling. And then I will varnish over it before I use it. I haven't yet because I just did this like three days ago. Okay, so let me move those out of the way. I forgot those were there. Alrighty, I did water marbling many, many years ago. Yes, it's so fun. It can be a little messy. The paper where you said you could see a whale, I saw a pumpkin stem. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look at that. Yes, I um, I, I love seeing those things like in clouds and tiles. So, all right, same background. Painted all of them in this series so far with slate gray, all right? And then I came in with warm white and I did the stenciling, and I show this on the very first one, uh, maybe even the second one. The daffodil, again, that lesson you can find on my YouTube channel, shows you exactly how I did the stenciling, the stamping, um, in the background and on the frame, all right? Not gonna spend the time to do that today. Again, there's a video on it and you can watch that. What I did once I got my line drawing on, and let me share with you guys. So I do my line drawings just on regular computer paper, okay? Now, I either use acetate or vellum to line up, giving me a good reference point, which is that upper left corner. Even if I put it all the way down, see, I wouldn't get all the pattern. So I like to set, you know, that way you can line it up in your upper left corner. You can do that. And then I just move that part over. So when I printed it off, I wanted to show you this, I just print it off. I cut off the stem, attach it. That way you have your pattern. 
You can lay down graphite paper, line that up with that upper left corner, and there's your line drawing, okay? Just go over it with a pen. Now, when it gets into doing like the stamens and things on this piece, of course, those lines are gone, right? We have to paint the petals first. And for me to go around each little line and stamen and piston, that would take way too long. So you have a couple of choices. You can wing it, and I'll show you how to wing it. Or you can print your line drawing off. Again, line it up. Lay it in place. This will show you. <laughs> this will show and tell. It will tell you how bad of a pattern transfer -er 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 that I am. But also, when I base coat, I do not care if it goes outside the lines. I just don't. I If I... I just don't. I was going to say I'll make an excuse, but I have no excuse because I don't care if it's the same size. Now, if I'm doing something that needs to be size specific, I will. But a flower petal, if I go a little bit outside the line, oh well, right? Okay, so what you can do is line that back up, stick your transfer paper down. Once you do your petals, you can outline your stamens again. Again, I will show you how to do that later <laughs> if I don't forget. Um, let's get busy painting. So I went ahead and I base coated. Let's move. I'm going to go right to there. Um, love that you marbled your brushes, right? Well, I had done one before with, um, I poured on it, like uh, the paint pouring. And then I also did one with a decal and I loved that. Um, and that actually the marbling on it reminded me of the decal that I had done. So I base coated my flower with warm white. So DecoArt Americana, warm white. I base coated my stem, my leaves, this little um, kind of a tube that's at the bottom or back of this Stargazer Lily. I did as well with Antique Green. Down to the butterfly, I used white and primary blue mixed together. Again, this is all in the instructional packet as well that you can find um, on my website. And you can also use that code, which will get you a discount on the e-packet, okay? So uh, I would say about one to one, and then add a touch more white, okay? One to one, just to make a light blue. For my body on my butterfly, I just used Payne's Gray because I'm gonna use that when I shade, all right? So let's go ahead and take care of our stem and our leaves first, because those we can knock out, and then I can zoom in and share um, that flower with you guys, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and get out um, all the stamps, stencils that I used as well are on my website, all listed in the e-packet as well. So we're going to get out some plantation pine and I'm just using my gray palette paper. Um, ooh, I need to shake that a little bit better. <clears throat> and y'all know this is going to get a little loud, but y'all know that right there is going to hurt your hands. Click it on another bottle top so that you don't wreck the palm of your hand. All right, that's better. And then I am going to go ahead and get out a little bit of antique green. Here's another tip. You want to make sure you get those off. They're gross, first off. The other thing is they make your connection with that lid and top worse. And you want to be able, you heard that close, you want to be able to close them so that they don't dry out. All right. So take those off. So I know some people put them in a jar. I just got all down my nail. Um, some people put those in a jar. Some I've seen some people make necklaces out of them when the hole is intact. <laughs> I throw them away. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out some titanium white. Snow, oops, see, there's another one. Snow titanium white. And I'm going to put these side by side so that you can see them. Um, because it might not, you'd be like, why are you using warm white and titanium white? They actually are very different. Titanium white is going to give you some brightness. So see how much brighter that is? That kind of dulls just a little, but it covers really, really well. So if I mix 
um, titanium white with either of those greens, I'll get a different look than if I used warm white with both of those greens, all right? So what else do we need out? We need a little bit of, we're gonna put some of our flower color on there and I won't do that until later. Um, and then also some asphaltum. So I do have this now um, on my website along with the fluid acrylics. So this is the pink we're gonna use on our flower today, but you can use and substitute, I think, wild berry, berry cobbler. Um, it's just a really pretty, highly pigmented pink. So that's what I chose to go with. So on the, we'll start up here and we'll work our way down. I'm gonna use an angle brush. <clears throat> Let me find one. So I'm gonna use my 3 8 angle. Okay, so it's my black gold 3 8 angle that has seen better days. It's well used, but still works great because I take care of those bristles. Okay, so I'm going to keep a little bit of water in that brush. Oh, I also need some paints gray. You can use the Media Line paints gray, which is my go to for just about everything. You can also use paints gray in the Americana line or whatever paint that you use. Um, what I love about this one is it's highly pigmented and it's transparent. So I can mix that with my regular paints. So a little plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Work that in on the toe of the brush. So on an angle brush, notice it has a um, heel. It's, it's at an angle, it goes to the taller, which is the toe. Let's load that. And right up underneath my flower, I'm gonna float some of that color. And if it gets on the petals, you can just get it off with the heel of the brush or your finger. Okay, now I'm noticing that's a little bit on that darker side. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the plantation pine and work that in. I don't want it to look black. I just want it to look like dark green. Okay, so I'm going to Swipe my finger right down there. Soften that. Don't be afraid to use those fingers. Come up underneath that. That was me being a little lazy, not getting my heat tool <laughs> out um, because I just did my finger. I used my finger to soften it and blend it out. Okay. Now I am going to come in with that same color and go right down the back of that stem. So notice how my brush is at an angle. You see how my brush is at an angle. The toe is further down the stem than the heel. That is going to help keep you from getting a line straight across because if you have any paint that migrates, guess what, that goes past my stem. So I wanna come right along that stem and again, sometimes I'll do that and then I just help it along. Use your fingers, swipe it along. I know I have a leaf right here that goes over that stem, so I'm just going to move that paint all the way down to the bottom, which you can't see because I'm off camera. Okay, so like even here where there's that leaf, I know that leaf goes over it, I still will go. It just kind of helps with that flow instead of going to there, stopping, going to there, stopping. When I come back in and I do this leaf, watch how simple it is just to put that color right back over. Okay, so you can kind of redefine that, where that leaf is going. And anything you get that goes over the line possibly, you can use a clean brush, clean it up with the chisel edge of that brush. Sometimes I'll miss it when I'm painting. I leave it and I'll just come back with the background color and fix it up. All right. So I am going to lift this up, put a little bit of that antique green just to soften that look just a little. That's the thing, if you get it too dark, and we're gonna do dry brushing there, which is gonna make it really nice and bright, um, but don't, don't fret about it. 
you know, just paint a wash of another color and I'll show you on the stem, just like I've done on several of these in this series, that if my stem's too kind of disjointed, a wash of paint over it brings it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna take that same mixture, Plantation Pine, show you my palette here, Plantation Pine, Payne's Gray, mix both those together on the toe of the brush only. Right above this leaf, we want to put some of that color right there. All right. Where that stem and leaf meet, we want to put some color. And then I'll go ahead and take that color. Let me turn that Oop, right outside the line. I'll take that color and put it right hello, along there. See how that's not moving? I need more moisture in my brush. Okay, the other thing is I am getting um, a very tiny area of shading, right? Well, if you want to increase, like that area just increased for me in space, go up a brush size. So I'm going to switch to the half inch angle, and I'm so sorry, I've got paint all under my nail. <laughs> um, so let's get a little bit of Plantation Pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray moisture in our brush. Now what's going to happen? There we go. I have a bigger floated area. You don't want it to look like a line. Okay, you want to lay that brush flat and get that color on. All right, now we'll come back over here to these. I'm going to just, I'm actually going to turn it back so that I can keep my hand out of the way. And we're going to pull that right along this edge of the leaf right along to that side okay and it does have some shading underneath it, it has like a little flip you can see the back end of that leaf um, this reference photo from some lilies that my husband got me um, when I was traveling a couple years ago had these leaves and there were so many in the arrangement but what I loved on this one it had the three leaves and this one just kind of folded. It was like it was wrapped around it. And I just, I loved the look of it. So, you know, artistic license, I could have left it just on the side, but I wanted to challenge myself and have that wrap right around that stem. And my number one rule in painting is if you like it, leave it. If not, there's a way to fix it. Okay, we'll do the same thing right up underneath where those two leaves meet. And then also on the flip side of that, where these meet. And then up that side. So the thing with the angle brush, again, is you want to use it flat. You want to see that bleed. You want to see those colors um, gradate. So up on the chisel edge is going to give you a straight line. And we'll do that on the petals, so you'll see the difference definitely. Okay. So we have that shaded, and then we're gonna come right over here. Don't be afraid to move your piece. We're gonna do a little shading right where that leaf meets that stem to distinguish between the two. All right, so see how our leaves are kind of coming together there? All right, mine is step away and don't put, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's step away from the brush. <laughs> so, I understand. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit right there. So on this lily, there was like a little joint that, you know, kind of where the stem meets that part where the flower comes up and out of. So I'm gonna put a little bit there. Let's go ahead and rinse that out. And I'm gonna grab a sip of water real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is come over, a little moisture in my brush, a little water. I wanna pick up some, oh, I forgot, matcha green. So matcha green is a really pretty, um, it, I would say it's muted, but it's not, because you can mix that with that um, warm white or even the titanium white, and you get a nice kind of yellowy green color. 
What I like to do, because my leaf was base coated with the antique green, I don't want to make my highlight too bright right away. So I'm going to pick up a little antique green. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that matcha green. I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. Okay, and work that in both sides of that brush. Do you see how there's just a runway there and it slightly gradates over? In fact, you can walk it to make your color lighter, lighter, lighter. But there is no color on the heel of that brush. That We want that. We want no color on the heel so that when we go to put this color on, we keep that color at the base, okay? If we, if we have it across the whole brush, our floated highlight is going to be too wide. Hello. Let's help that along. <laughs> okay. So, was my hand out of the way or totally in the way? I'm just gonna soften that out. You could use a mop brush if you want to, to kind of soften that look. Um, I have one right here, a little IPC soft mop blend that you can use right there just to kind of soften it out if you need to. Um, I do want to widen that just a little, not that much. I do want to widen that just a little though, right there. Now I get this often um, when I'm teaching, but a lot of times when I'm teaching online, especially, um, that, oh, I always heard you do the highlights first and then you do the shading second. And guys, it really doesn't matter because guess what? You're probably going to go have to go back and look and adjust one or the other. Um, so it really, there's no order. Do it the way you like um, and play around with it. If you're like struggling with every time doing your highlights and then you put your shading on and you mess your highlights up, switch it up. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this leaf. I switched to my 3 8 angle, so a little bit smaller. And I have that antique green, matcha green, and warm white. I'm going to do that little highlight there. And then again, let's take that little mop. And I'm not going all the way to the edge with the mop. I'm only right there where it meets that green. And then we'll do the same thing. Let's see if I can use the 3 8 Might need to switch to the 12, or the uh, half inch, excuse me, the 12. <laughs> okay, so remember when I said something about, you know, if you get it too bright and it's like, ooh, in your face. Um, with the stem, I'm gonna show you how to tone those down. So again, right where that left off, and look how that just nicely blends right into that base color. Okay, now underneath this leaf, I do have a much darker um, Payne's Gray Plantation Pine. There's like a little flip right there underneath. Okay, so I have that. <coughs> I think most of us use a seven by, oh, so y'all must be talking, oh, Joyce, did you join? Uh, so the, the mm, journal I use, you can get at Walmart. Let me see if I have one. I do right here. Just because I'm seeing some, some conversation about it. Um, I have not gotten my order in from July, or no, September of last year. Um, but this is the one I prefer. It's a 7 by 10 You can get it at Walmart pretty cheaply. Um, in fact, they get a much better deal because they're Walmart um, than I do. So... When I can get them back in, I will. Okay, now what I wanna do, once we've gotten that on, is I'm gonna rinse that brush out, and I wanna keep some of that moisture in my brush. I'm gonna come right over here um, and pick up on the toe of the brush, some plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray, work that in. Now, it doesn't matter if I have it on the whole flat of the brush. I'm gonna hold it up and show you why. Okay. So I have it on that side and I have it on that side, right? But what I wanna do is I'm going to slide and make those um, lines that are on Lily Lee's. So I'm just going to slide on the chisel edge. You can use a liner brush if this um, doesn't work for you with the chisel edge of the brush. But what I want you to remember when you're doing very thin lines 
on the chisel edge of a brush, you want little to no pressure, okay? This is little to no pressure. I'm ice skating on the tippy tips of those bristles. If I do that, I'm pushing on those bristles, all right? I don't wanna do that. I want really nice, thin lines. Ice skate, everything moves at the same rate. Okay, so watch as you're pulling that brush, you really want the handle of the brush straight up and down. If it leans back, you're putting too much pressure. If you lean forward, you're putting too much pressure on the front end. Um, so we don't wanna do that. Just nice little variegated lines, too um, dark, touch them with your finger. And I will go back, guys, and look at the comments and answer anything you need me to. Um, hello, Ann Davis. Good to see you on. So um, I will go back and look at any of the comments and answer those. Okay, guys? It's me, solo. I do want to darken and deepen because right now, to me, this leaf looks like it's that's the back of the leaf. And really that is the front of the leaf. So I'm gonna darken my shading right in here. Pull that down right to there. Okay, so hopefully that helps you see the separation. A little bit in there. Oops, we forgot a little shading right here. Right up underneath that li um, leaf, we need some shading right there on our stem. Okay, it's a little on the dark side, Sandy. <laughs> okay, let's get our, okay, okay. Can I say okay another time? Hello, um, must be my word of the day. I'm gonna use a liner brush. You can use a rigger, a liner. Um, Whatever you have to give that, I'm gonna use a little plantation pine, a little bit of antique green, and this time I'm gonna use a little bit of titanium white. So I just have a liner brush. This is a size zero liner. Um, I think my riggers are over at my other workstation. Now what I wanna do on this part right here, let's come this way and keep my hand out of the way, is I'm going to slide from the tip and I'm gonna give that a little bit of an edge. Okay, so let's darken that just a little. So I just picked up a little plantation pine. Put that underneath edge there. Okay, now I can already tell that needs to be a little bit um, more solid it's very thin. So I'm going to pick up some antique green, a little bit of matcha, and a little bit of warm white. So antique green, matcha green, warm white. I'm not sure what I wrote in my packet, but I'm seeing that this is a little too bright, too quick. There we go. A little more muted. Okay, so we have a flip there. We also have a flip on this leaf right here. Let's get a little bit more. Again, antique green, matcha green, warm white. We'll come right here. And then I like to swipe my finger where it joins so it doesn't look like it just stops and that's too straight, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then this one as well right here, so. And if you don't have much of a wiggle on your leaf, give it a wiggle. You can, you know, control that brush and make it do what you want it to do. So I'm gonna kinda emphasize this right there and soften it with my finger, okay? Now, those are sticking out like a sore thumb, right? We're gonna tone them down. Hello, Robin. Hello, Karen. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Isabel. Good to see you guys on. 
<laughs> right, Judy? I do. And funny thing is, I probably have a rigger at this station, and I just looked in my other brush container. I do. Yay! There's my number two. I try to keep them, but then what happens is I go to one station, and I come here, and I grab something, or I walk over with it and forget that I have it. Okay. So, what I want to do now is come in with that three-eighths angle. <clears throat> and I'm going to just pick up, I have water in my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of plantation pine. See how green and inky, kind of runny consistency, inky consistency. And I'm going to paint a little wash of that plantation pine. Now, plantation pine is a transparent color. Um, so you'll be able to see all the color you put down underneath. But look how it tones down that highlight. And then, you know, sometimes... <laughs> I do that. Those are those things that sometimes I do them and I, I just don't write it down because I forget. But it helps when I'm painting with you guys live too because then I can remember, oh yeah, I did wipe that with my finger. So just kind of soften it a little. Hello, Lucy. Good to see you on. Painting really challenges you to stretch your, stretch your observation skills. It sure does, Karen. Isn't it fun? Like I said, if it's not fun, you got to figure out what's going to make it fun. So, we want to put some brown on here, like we did on the calla lily last weekend, where we just made it a little bit more natural. So, a little bit of that asphaltum. My brush is wet, and I have just a little bit. Let me pull it over here so you can see it. So I'll just take a little with the toe. Oops, too much water. A little with the toe, work that in. Make it nice and inky. Get a little bit of that brown on. Especially on that matcha green. Oh my goodness, guys. And the antique green, it loves those colors. Makes it more... Um, earthy and natural looking. I'm trying to fix that and I'm messing up all that. So let's come back up, Sandy. and Because that I can fix with background color. Put a little bit on the leaf. Okay. And then we'll put some of that on our stem as well. So let's go ahead and dry that. We're going to do a little dry brushing, then we'll move on to our the rest of our um, stem. Finish that up. Hello, Linda Alavaris. Good to see you on. And Janet. And Linda Safranco. All righty. So I'm going to use a small mezzaluna brush. So this is one of our giveaway items for this um, weekend as well, this lesson. So the Mezzaluna brush is a stiff, it's a blend of a stiff and softer bristle. Fantastic for dry brushing. My favorite is the small. As you can see, I use it a lot. Um, this one wears out the, the quickest. So then I usually go to my medium and switch things up. But we're gonna come in and do a little dry brushing now. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of plantation pine and a little bit of titanium white. Mix that together and you wanna dry it off on a dry paper towel. Okay, dry it off on a dry paper towel. I can already tell I need a little bit more white. I don't get these brushes wet before I use them. I use them completely dry and I'll show you how to switch between colors. All right, so soft back and forth to dry brush. Get a little bit more, wipe it off. I love the texture it gives. I love that sketchy look. Um, if you don't, you can always paint a wash or highlight you know, the color on there that you'd like. I just like the way that it looks. So that was the Plantation Pine and Warm White. Now I'm gonna go to Antique Green. I don't need to wipe it out or wash it out yet. And then let's do a little bit of white. And then let's dry almost all of that off, wipe all of that off, I should say. You might think, oh, I don't have any paint. If you can go to your hand and do that and you see paint, you've got paint on that brush. 
All right, great way to test it too before you go to your piece and you have way too much paint and have to get it off, you know, like that. That might be a little too much. Again, we're dry brushing. You can also dry brush with a flat brush. Same thing, load it up, wipe it off till you have and feel like you have nothing left on it. All right, so load it up, wipe it off again. And because I'm dry, you can still see all the lines I put underneath, right? So, again, antique green, titanium white, just get a little brighter highlight, a little bit of texture. This is what I was talking about, like on the shadows. So if you get in and you mess up your shadow, very last thing I do on every single project I paint is to evaluate my lights, my darks, and adjust as necessary. Learned that from the extremely talented Dorothy Dent. Among others, I should say. But that's the first time I had ever, um, that kind of resonated. Um, however, now I think about it, there was, it was another instructor, but that was the one that resonated me with the most when Dorothy told me that. Okay, so just a little dry brush here and there, not everywhere. Right now, I'm gonna take that same color, antique green, a little bit of titanium white, and I'm gonna dry brush a little up here on the stem. I know we haven't put our highlight on, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dry brush it right there. Antique green, a little bit of titanium white. Load it up, wipe it off. Now, look at the difference with that leaf now that we've done the um, that kind of flip on the front end and a little bit of a highlight there with that deep, dark shadow. Now the leaf doesn't look like it's folded backwards, but it looks like it's actually a little cupped, right? And that's, that's just one thing I love about painting is, you know, that using lights and darks and color to create shape and form. That certainly did it for you there. All righty, so a little bit more on that stem. Come right down there. You can't see the bottom because I'm off camera. Now, sometimes doing this step, you can be done with your highlight on your stem, all right? So I do like to float that same color combination along that um, left side, or excuse me, the right side of the stem, which we're gonna do. But let's keep going with a little bit of this dry brush. So some matcha green and titanium white now. Now look at the difference. It's the antique green and that matcha green just has a little bit more yellow in it. So you're gonna get a brighter highlight. We use the white, which is gonna brighten that up as well. Load it up, wipe it off. And this I don't want to use everywhere. I just want it like wherever I want my brightest highlight. Sometimes just like a little spot like there. Oh, now I don't have that on my original, but I need to add it to my original because I love that. So I'll see if I have a little bit of color on there. <laughs> Can never paint anything exactly the same way, step by step. Um, doing the same step-by-steps. It just, you know, again, that happened, loved it, have to leave it. All right, let's come over here and we're gonna add a little bit of a highlight here, a little bit brighter. Let's wipe that off. And then we'll get a little bit of that brighter right over here. I know I did there, just didn't, it didn't do that and I want that. I like that. Wipe it off. And again, I'm using matcha green, titanium white. Ooh, there we go. Soft, soft, soft circular motion. Okay. When I start to feel like nothing's coming off my brush, I apply more pressure. But I always start off very soft to begin with. Get a little more there. Okay. So I'm going to reload that brush again. Matcha green, a little bit of white. Little on the stem, little up here. Get 
killing me not to look at the comments, <laughs> but I want to I want to finish. I'm not have you guys here for six hours, although that would be fun, wouldn't it? Can dry brush a little on that flip on that leaf, but look how that just makes that shape come together, right? Oh, so, so pretty. I love the look of the leaves, so real looking. Thank you. I'm doing more dry brushing after watching you. It really adds a nice highlight, right? Um, I did hear that, uh, Linda Safranco, I did, and it's, it's just heartbreaking. Um, Dorothy Dent is an amazing lady, instructor, painter, just so talented. And I loved her philosophy that everybody could paint. I'm a firm believer in that. Everyone can learn to paint. You just have to want to learn. You have to want to do it um, and continue to grow. Like I've always said, if I ever get to the point where I feel like I know everything, it's time for me to put my brushes up, retire, and move to Key West. <laughs> um, because there's so much to learn. I'll never learn everything. There's so many people I want to learn from. You know, I want to travel and take a class with Peggy Harris in Nashville and so many. I wish I had taken from Joe Sonia. Anyway, all righty. So once you get those little highlights on, I get um, a little bored with the same thing over and over again. So I love learning new techniques, new things, new ways to do things. Um, a lot of times I just explore and figure it out myself. But um, a lot of times when I take from an instructor, I'm going to zoom out just a little. I love to take pieces and parts and incorporate it into what I do. Okay, so we've got our stem and our leaves on. Now we do want to come back. I'm going to come to my um, quarter inch angle. So this is the smaller of the three angles I have in my angle set. Um, quarter inch angle, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the antique green on the toe of the brush only, and a little bit of white. Let's put that down because I cannot load it. Now, this might be a little on the small side. I might need to go up to my um, 3 8 angle. We'll see. But a little bit of moisture, that's going to help that paint come off. I'm just going to slide that on, my little highlight, even though we've got some dry brushing there. A little bit better highlight on there. Right in here. On my um, reference photo, there was like a little highlight in this section where the stem and that kind of tubular tube base of that flower met. So, and then I just touch it to soften it. Is that zoomed in enough for you guys need me to zoom in a little bit more? Okay. Um, I'm just gonna take that and slide it right down the center of that stem. So we dry brushed. I had that on my brush still. I'm just going to keep going with it. Right down here at the base of the stem, I do have a little bit of shading right up underneath because the stem was cut. Um, I take my pictures out and do all these different reference photos. So took out... Um, some and took pictures of like how the stems end, how the leaves attach, but right where those two meet so that you have a little bit of um, that cut at an angle stem, all right? Now, the only other thing I wanna add to this is some brown. So I'm gonna use that same brush, a little bit of water in it, pick up some asphaltum on the toe of that brush, and I'm going to brush that over so it's, I'm on that left side, but it's going over some of the highlight. And that's where you're going to get that really pretty brown, earthy uh, look. Oh, I just love that color over that color. All right. You know what? Since we're down here, let's go ahead and take care of our butterfly. And then we'll move on to our flower. So I'm going to use that same angle brush, my quarter inch angle. I'm going to get out some primary blue. In the media line, if you're using the media line, you can use um, like phthalo blue is a really good uh, match to that. 
of how you use your fingers to blend. Thank you, Barb. <laughs> um, yes, Yvonne, I think Joe Sonia is still painting and teaching. Yes. Alrighty. So let's zoom in on our butterfly just so you can see all the little details. So on my angle brush, <clears throat> I'm going to pick up on the toe only a little bit of primary blue. Oops, did you see that or was I not over all the way? There we go. And then I'm going to just float that color right at the base of those wings. So remember the wings were painted with that primary blue and some white. And I'm just going to float that color very loosely, as you can see there, at the base of those wings. Get some more paint, come over here. Oops, dry, need a little bit of moisture. And um, I love sharing when I learn tips and tricks from other instructors as well. So take a brush with water on it, tap it on your palette. I learned this from Lana Lamb, oh my gosh, years ago, years, years, years ago. And when you have loaded the toe of the brush, if you need a little bit more paint, you can either use the toe and pick up just the tiniest touch right on your palette, okay? And reload that. So you just want it to move. So there we go. We're gonna get that to loosely float right off our angle brush. I haven't had luck with a smaller angle brush than the quarter inch. Um, I will just say that when you're painting, if you're struggling with the size, like it's making too much of a line, make sure that you're flat. Um, and then also check your size. You might be too small for where you're painting um, and up, go up a size, like the 3 eighths or the half inch. I'm gonna get some of this slate gray because <laughs> I don't know about y'all when you're painting at home and doing stuff, but if there's something like that that's aggravating me, <laughs> I have to fix it. So this little spot right there, I'm just gonna take some of that background color. Even though I have some shading there, right now it's aggravating me, so. And it will dry funny enough. It looks lighter, but it will dry just like that. All right, so with our butterfly, what we wanna do, let's go ahead and dry that. So, let's move that out of the way. And let's just come here for a second because I, um, I want to show you this. I did this with my membership group, and I think it's a really good quick lesson, quickly, <laughs> when you see shapes. Okay, so if I have a circle for the head and the body, and one of my members said that looks like a golf tee. So, let's say you have a golf tee, right? And then you have a triangle. Now, sometimes I will paint my butterflies just like this and make them triangle. But if you want to give them some shape, that triangle base is gonna help you achieve that. I can go right up that triangle, little wave, back into the body. Follow the triangle, wave, back to the body. Okay, so let's come to our butterfly here. And I have, um, this is my two rigger. You can use a liner brush. I'm gonna pick up some of the Payne's Gray. I didn't use black because it was the only thing I would have used black on. So what I wanna do, oop, got an errant little stray hair there. Let me get that off on my rigger there. Um, and this might be a little too thick. I might need to go down to like my 10 aught or my zero rigger. Let's see how it works. So I'm just gonna start here and I'm gonna do a little edge on that butterfly wing. Just like that and then pull it right down the front. Okay, a little bit of water to get that to slide right off that brush. Right 
it in there. And I get asked often if I painted first or if I drew first or if I knew how to draw and, you know, painting came. I never knew how to draw a stick figure. The more you paint, the more you see shapes, the easier it is for you to then draw that shape. And so when I'm drawing, I mimic what I would do with my brush and vice versa. So this has taught me um, to see shape and then also to, um, to be able to draw things that I never ever thought I could draw. So they do go hand in hand. You don't need to know how to draw to paint um, and you don't need to know how to paint to draw, but they do gr go great together, okay? Now, once we have that on, I have a couple of choices. I can take, let me see, I'm gonna take my quarter inch angle. I'm gonna pick up on the chisel edge of the brush, I wanna pick up a little white. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna work that in. Then I'm gonna take a clean paper towel. I'm just gonna swipe it to get that excess off. And then right there at the base of the wings, I'm going to lightly pull up and out. Same thing there. Kind of touch it and pull. That's just gonna give it a little highlight before we put on the loops. And you could do this part before doing the body and the, um, the lines like I did with the Payne's Gray. Oops, little bit of moisture. Just a touch if it's not moving. I don't want it, it's not like a float though. It's a dry paint. Kind of swipe with that brush. All right. So, now let's dry that. You can use the liner brush to um, go around and do the loops and things like that, but I have to show you one of my new favorite, 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 favorite tools um, that one of my members sent me. And it is, I shared it with you guys last week. I got paint on it, so I'm trying to get that off. Um, but it's Thule Art, and it's a fine liner pen. And this one, oh, that's an 01. Let's see, that might be a little too thick. I'm looking for my, there it is, the 005 love now this is thin enough and you don't want to use it on wet paint but you can write over paint you can paint over this and it's not going to bleed you can varnish this and it's not going to bleed all right so i am going to do these little loops again you don't have one of these you can use the fine tip on an identa pen it's not as fine as you can see there you can also use a fine tip or ultra fine tip Sharpie marker. It won't bleed, but um, again, it's not gonna be as fine. So I'm just gonna do these little loops. This is in the line drawing. So you could always take it, you know, once you get it base coated on and you can put those on. I'm just, just winging it. So these little loops. I do want to make that a little bit thicker. Okay. And then let's, where I have that a little bit thicker, I'm going to fill that in with that Payne's Gray. All right. Now let's dry that. Um, so I just saw Denise's comment. She said, not sure or how you can keep your paints moist. Mine seem to dry out quickly. Um, yes, and I'm not sure, Denise, if it's my Denise that lives in Canada. Um, or Denise, where do you live? It's... It can definitely dry out. Again, I live in middle Georgia and it's very humid and hot here. And with all my studio lights, it does dry out. I struggle a little more when I'm on my lives and stuff with the light, the uh, paints drying because of the lights. However, 
when you're going to float on a color, let's say, um, let's just do the green for a second. Before you float the color on, take your brush with a little bit of water, not that much water, and go over that area. Great little tip again from my friend Lana. And then load your brush, go back over it. So you've kind of prepped the surface, it's a little bit wet, and you can go. Um, I would say to just keep practicing with that moisture in your brush, a little bit of water, a little bit of um, Joe Sonia's Fast Drying Glaze works well, blending gel, blender extending gel. Um, I have to say, I typically just use water though. Okay, all right, so. There is our butterfly. I'm gonna zoom out just a touch. Hello. All right, let's go to our flower. I'm gonna look at comments really, really quick. What can you use if, if you don't have true blue? Uh, so Linda Safranco, I used primary blue. Um, if you don't have that, you could definitely use um, true blue. Oh, ultramarine blue, any blue color you like. I just wanted that um, that color, you know, the blue to kind of play off that pink um, and to stand out. So, um, and then I just saw a comment and let me explain that real quick, the difference. Thank you, Chris Avola. So this is a rigger. Now a rigger, some um, mistake it for a liner brush, but this is a faux squirrel no animals in uh, Dynasty's brushes. So this is a faux squirrel, synthetic bristle, but it can go to a flat brush with a nice chisel edge. A liner brush on the other hand, let me grab one. All right, Sandy, where's a liner brush? Which is kind of funny because I, I usually use a, um, my riggers. Okay, so this is a five, um, slash zero, five aught black gold liner brush. It's a script liner and it goes very round. Okay. It goes very round to a, let me get that to zoom in. There we go. It goes round to a tip. Now, can I make a liner brush flat? I can, I can push it out, but the tip is still rounded. Whereas on the rigger brush, the tip is flat. That's the difference, okay? And I like both. So, you know, again, use what works for you and what you like best. Now let's move on to our flower. We're gonna use, I'm using quinacridone magenta. If you don't have this, you can use berry cobbler, wild berry, um, any pink. This is highly pigmented. It's also transparent, which I love. All right, and we're going to come in with our three-eighths angle brush. Get that wet, tap it off. You can use an eight flat if you want to. I just, I love an angle brush. Okay, so look how pigmented that is. It's so vibrant. So I'm gonna come and walk away where it's from where it's darker over here. You still get great pigment, great coverage, great color. And I'm going to come right in and paint a wash on these petals. So even though the edges of them are white, I wanna start off with a little bit of that pink tint underneath them, but I don't want them solid pink. Okay. The same thing, I'll do a little from there. And I always follow the shape of my petal. So notice how I started there and I'm going right to that center. Everything follows the shape of my petal. So that first off, the paint will tell on me <laughs> um, and, and it will help me to see where and how that petal is moving. The other thing is when you repeat this process um, with your highlights and your shadows, and then all of a sudden it's just kind of that muscle memory of, oh, that's the way that petal's laying. If it gets too pink, don't worry about it. We're gonna go over it with some highlights, some dry brushing, and some other colors. So 
When it starts to do kind of like that, where it was drying out on me, you need to pick up a little bit more moisture in your brush. So basically just a very loose, light, I'm not going with the direction of my petal, um, wash of color. Get outside the lines. Again, it's a wash, so you shouldn't have that big of an issue, but you can always come in with your clean brush and clean up. I've got something that's sticking there. Alrighty, so a little bit more of that quinacridone magenta, a little moisture in my brush, right up underneath. And then we'll shade so that we can see, you know, what petal lays over the other petal. Um, this one goes back. And everything comes to the center of that flower. A little flip. Let's give it a little color. Same thing on this one. We'll give it a little bit of a color. There. All right. There we go. Yeah, the Rigger is it's such a fantastic brush. Um, you just have to keep playing with it and practicing with it, um, especially if you're used to a liner brush. My favorite liner brush used to be um, a number two script liner. And sometimes I find now for the way I paint, it's a little too long for me. Um, but using that Rigger has made me fall in love again with the length of that script liner. The, Two and the zero are a little bit longer than the 10 aught because the 10 aught is very tiny. Um, I do have all three of them, and I just got a shipment yesterday of angle brushes back in stock because y'all cleaned me out. Okay, so that's kind of our wash and base of our petals. Easy, right? Just easy peasy. Very light, very light. See how that's starting to lift? If you start to get something lifting, you just have too much moisture. So you just want to dry it before you move on. Hello, Donna. Hello, Jeannie Sl Sladko. I almost said Sladeko. <laughs> um, so Jeannie, the, the stenciling on the background and on the frame on my YouTube channel, you'll see a video for my daffodil. So I'm just gonna bring that one over so you can see it. So on this lesson, I show you start to finish how to do the stenciling on the panel and then also on the um, frame. All righty. So let's go ahead and do some shading to give ourselves some separation and to give us some details. So I'm gonna use my 3 8 angle brush again. Again, this is a great way to know if you have too much water. If you run it through your middle finger and your index finger, okay, which I do to kind of get my, see how much water is there? That's way too much water. If it's dripping down your fingers, you know you have too much. I don't usually push it that hard, but I wanted you guys to see. But I will run it through my index finger and my middle finger to get that nice chisel edge, and then to also check and see how wet it is. If it's too wet, tap it on your paper towel, get a little bit of moisture off, okay? So let's do a little shading. We're gonna pick up some of the quinacridone magenta, work that in. Oops, a little too wet on my brush. We just want it on that toe. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny touch of Payne's Gray. So look at my tiny touch, okay? And oftentimes I'll come over here, start it somewhere else if I have it too dark, like there. Then I can wipe it off, pick up just a little bit, and control how much of that dark I put into that pink. That color right there is very close to like a quinacridone violet. 
it's just gonna make it darker for us to separate these petals a little bit more. So I know that I have some separation in here. Okay. And we're gonna darken and, and enrich this shading with some, um, surprisingly enough, some asphaltum. We'll go up that petal right there because that petal lays over that one. And then what other? We have this one here. So the toe with the color is at the base of my shadow. This petal lays over this one. So I need to separate those and you do that with color. Okay, and then you just swipe that down. Load, load, load. And then that one overlaps that one. So we'll just come right at the base. And I usually do it where they separate. So they start to separate right there. You would have a natural little shadow right there. Right? And then one last place right here. Right there. Now, on lilies and flowers that have that kind of tube base, it's not really a tube. It's not like a like a trumpet flower that has a really long tube. This is the encasing part of the petals. And when they start to bloom and open up, you have this kind of tubular part. Now, with those flowers, you wanna be able to look like you could stick your finger right down in the center of it, right? So we do need to do a little bit of shading right here to darken that and bring that element into our flower. So right here, nice dark right there, okay? So it looks like I could stick my finger right in that section. Now what I wanna do is take my same angle brush, I'm gonna pick up some quinacridone magenta, I'm gonna pick up touch of asphaltum. I have to tell you guys, these two colors blended together, <gasps> not even just washed over each other or painted over each other, but blended together makes such a pretty color. Um, you'll get a similar color with the, um, like berry cobbler, wild berry, things like that. Okay. Now I know I have a little green triangle on some of these petals. However, I'm going to go ahead and show you first how to get those little lines. So we have those little, oops, little too much paint. I'm just gonna swipe it across my paper towel. Now these, you want to have them flow with the shape of that petal, okay? And I'm sliding on the chisel edge. Slakovich. Oh, is it Slakovich? Wow. All right, so I love that name. So um, I was just looking at, Jeannie told me her real last name. So, all right, so work that in. And again, on the chisel edge of the brush. So handle of the brush straight up. You're gonna slide like you're ice skating. So you can get a nice little thin line. Remember, if you push, you're gonna get a thick line, okay? So nice little thin line, little bit of moisture and we're going to paint and slide those little two lines right on our petals. Push that back in. So sometimes I'll go from the inside of the petal, the base of the petal out. Sometimes I go from the edge of the petal in, try to get my hand out of the way. Like on this, for instance, this one, this little petal has a flip, okay? And so it dips right here. So from that dip, I can slide in and slide in. Now, if you wanted to, you could also go a little on that flatter side to get a floated line if you don't wanna make them so pronounced. I personally like that little line that's on the, on the lily, so and they always seem pretty defined to me. And then here, we'll pull this one. Again, everything from the center, even though you can't see them later, 
you still want that flow and movement. So just put them on. Okay. And then our last little petal here. Oop, too much pressure, Sandy. And do you see why? <laughs> I was back here. So I was putting pressure on the heel. Watching you on tube, love your designs. I had so much I had to join almost. Oh, well, thank you, Pamela. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm not sure, did you guys see at the bottom of my live on my Sandy McTeer designs? Are there, um, like I know Jessica, and I'm not saying this so that you do it, but I'm wondering on the comment section if you guys see a place where it says stars. So the stars are a way that you can um, help me support a charity. And I'm still looking right now. I'm seriously leaning towards the kitchen. Um, I can't think of the guy's name that does the kitchens in areas that they have disasters. But anyway, it's, it's very little. It's little pennies that Facebook gives me. But at the same time, I'll be able to then pass that on. So, okay, so I just strengthen, strengthened that shadow right there at the base. So I could stick my finger in there if I wanted to. And I have that magenta and asphaltum on there. Remember I said we're going to darken that up. So we want to darken this up just a little bit. Magenta and asphaltum. And then right up underneath that flip, I'll put a little bit. Underneath that flip, oops, Sandy, right on the gray. Right there. So, Jeannie, you'll have to let me know if I said your last name right. <laughs> so I just picked up a little gray, because I know that'll aggravate me to get rid of it. Your background color, guys, can be your best eraser. Okay. So rinse that, come back to asphaltum, quinacridone magenta, asphaltum, work that in on the toe of the brush only. Moisture in your brush. And then let's come over to where we have some shading. Oops, Sandy. Soften that out just a little with your finger if it's too dark. That was a little too dark. Okay, this is just going to help define our sections. And I do this often in my painting, guys. Even as I'm designing and painting it for the first time, if I start to lose the shape of a petal, if I start to lose the movement and the way that these are laying, I will go back and, you know, kind of strengthen my shadow. And it just helps me to be able to see everything a little bit better. All right, so now we've got that separation in our flower, right? Loving that. Stars doesn't seem to be working today. Well, bummer. Not sure what's up with that. But thanks for checking, Judy. All righty. So we have white on the edges of these petals. Let me show you. I'm going to leave the center alone for right now. So we have, see how the edges, now I, there are so many, goodbye Henriette. Um, she's a teacher in Berlin. Oh, goes to Berlin. Oh, well, have fun. Thanks for being here. Okay, so I am going to do some, some white along the edges. Now, I've done stargazer lilies um, where there's a lot of pink here, but then also kind of some pink on the edge, but I really like the white along the edge of the petals. Um, I wish I had grabbed the other one I did with my students years ago um, and forgot to grab that because I did a little um, clay stargazer lily. Okay, I forgot two things. This little flip here needs some of that quinacridone magenta and asphaltum. So, Strengthen that. My own camera. Yep. A little bit there. And then there's a little one right there. 
Okay, so see what a difference just that little tiny bit of color makes. We'll do it to there. I don't really, I don't think I have a flip on that one, on my original. It goes up and over, but you know what? I like it, so I'm going to leave it. That's my rule. And we'll strengthen that just a little there. Okay. Now, let's rinse that out really, really, really well. Keep a little moisture in there. I'm going to come over and I'm going to pick up some white. I'm going to work that in just on the toe of the brush only. Okay. Toe of the brush only. If you have a little pink that comes out in it, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want too much, all right? So I wanna start with the heel that has nothing on it, and I'm going to work my way from the bottom here, and you can soften that with your finger. You certainly don't wanna see any kind of a start line like that, so either soften it with the heel of the brush or your finger, and we are going to do this on all the edges of the petals. And again, I'm gonna try and keep my hand out of the way. That one goes over that one. So you'd have some light there. And then I brightened my white on the edges of my petals with a little dry brushing. Because again, I love the look. So we'll come here. This one goes over. So I'm gonna start right down here where we did a little shading on that petal. Slide up. Come down. I'm gonna have to turn it because my hand's at a very weird angle. I can't see. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so see how that's starting to brighten up? Really love. Even though my hand was at a very weird angle, I love that so much more than I love this one. I know I haven't done that side yet, but that side's hurting. So a little bit better floating right there. And like I mentioned, guys, I'm not looking at the comments right now, but I will definitely go back and answer any questions that you might have. Um, when we are done, okay. Now, you wouldn't have a really bright highlight right where that petal flips over, okay? It usually is a little bit darker, um, and we are gonna add a little shading there. I keep getting a stop line right there. There. Let's come back over and get some of this side. And like I said, it's you can adjust as you need to when you're all done. If you need to make that a little brighter white, you can come back and make it a little brighter white and you'll have sections where you can make it a little brighter white. I like it where now I can see the whole petal, get in there with that highlight color and I, nothing's stopping me. I don't have a stamen or a piston that's you know stopping me from the flow of that paint and the movement of that brush. So another thing you can do is you can go back to your, where is it at? I can go back to my um, soft flat mop and just kind of soften that if I need to. Again, you don't want any kind of start or stop line. And if you go over the, Thing, just pick up a little bit of background color. Alrighty. So right here, this petal lays over. So let's turn it. Keep my hand out of the way. So notice how I started with my angle brush here, but it's not all the way to the very base of that petal. So again, you wouldn't have white going all the way to the base. And if you do, you can come back in with some of your um, quinacridone magenta and asphaltum and take care of that. Now this one, I do have a very strong white, which we'll do with a liner brush, right along that edge. Okay, loving that, loving that. I love this petal right here, I don't know why. 
I love the way it flips on the original. I love the shading right in here, which we'll do. Um, and I think because it's different, it's different than the others. Hopefully I'll be able to soften that. There we go. All right, so look at just that difference right there that it gave. You know, and I have a couple little spots where the white got out. Again, I love when that happens because it doesn't look cookie cutter. It doesn't look like they have the same exact shading on all sides. It, so again, if you like it, leave it. If you don't, you can fix it, okay? So I am gonna bring a little bit of white here and slide it right to that tip. Brighten that a little bit better. All right. Now let's dry this. Oh, thank you, Jessica. I love Stargazer Lily. I love lilies. Um, someone mentioned something about the smell. And sometimes, yes, when I have um, the lilies start to smell after a while in a flower arrangement. Um, the other thing is those pesky little stamens. You know, I some of my friends before, I would just cut them off. I love them. They're so pretty. So usually I will lay either parchment paper or something down on um, my countertop or wherever I have an arrangement if it has lilies in it because those will stain stain pretty bad at that all right um, I noticed a place I needed more white and I see it right here okay and then let's dry that really well. They are very aromatic. Yes, Pat. Um, I do, I love, I love the way they grow. I love their petals. I love all the details. Um, again, the smell when they first, when I first get them. But after a while, the leaves, everything else, the stem and the water kind of starts to stink a little. Okay. Now, what I want to do before I move on to, um, adding like our little dots is I do want to add a little bit deeper, richer color on some of these petals. So I'm going to use that same 3 8 angle, pick up some quinacridone magenta. Oops, a little too much water. That right there is going to tell on you. If you've got too much water as you're working your way over, just touch your paper towel. And this is what I do. Just touch your paper towel. It'll take some of that moisture on your brush away. Come back to your runway. Okay. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Okay. So I know that I want to add a little bit more color right here. And I'm going to load and mix them looking at my original and I see that pink, but I also see some asphaltum. So I'm picked up a touch of asphaltum. Touch it. <laughs> there we go. Look how much richer and deeper that makes that color. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Now I am gonna take my mop, just kind of soften that out right along that edge. So I'm not here where it's very heavy in paint. I'm right along the edge where it ends to kind of tap that into my flower petal. Okay, so we'll pick up same color. Quinacridone magenta and some asphaltum. I'm just going to lay in a little bit deeper color. Not everywhere, but here and there, especially here where our flower starts to flop over. Add a little. So we're gonna add a little bit of color there. Okay, now let me lay that down so that you can see the difference. Oh, so pretty, right? So let's go ahead and put some of that asphaltum and Quinacridone magenta right in here. Just wiped off a little bit of that paint. OK. 
Okay, wipe off a little bit of that paint. I don't want to, I don't want to take away the pretty white that we put on. Um, you just want to make some of these a little bit richer, bring some of that pink right back to our petal. Okay. Now I do have right here. Oops. A little bit more asphaltum. You'll be able to see the difference, even if you're using, let's say, um, berry cobbler or wild berry or another pink besides quinacridone magenta. You'll see the difference if you don't have that asphaltum in there with it. Okay, so see how that kind of at an angle gives more of that shadow from that petal. Love that. And then we need at the base of the flip right here where it kind of curls over. I am going to, on this one, I am going to just slide that up a little the middle. A little bit right on that edge. Okay. So, and I think that, um, I just saw someone, uh, Molly Ann, say that they are, um, what is it? Your sister-in-law is allergic to them, and they're not good for dogs or cats, if I'm not mistaken. They can be toxic, right? Dogs or cats, if I'm not mistaken? Don't know. All right, let's come over here, and I'm going to, I think I have too much paint on my brush, right at this little fold over, I want to put a little bit of color. Just soften that with your finger or with the heel of that brush. Hello. Let's rinse that out. So if you're floating on color and it's everywhere from the toe to the heel, you have to rinse your brush out and start over. That's what I was having there. It was all the way to my heel, which meant it was getting back here. Okay, so do yourself a favor. Rinse your brush out. Start over. Float that color on. Hello. Much easier when you have your brush loaded right. And I'm just going to soften that. Okay, I love the way that looks. So on this one here, we have a little bit deeper shading on that flip. Right there. So I'll just go over that a second time and look how that just darkens it up. Have a little there. And then back here, again... A little bit richer on that shading with the quinacridone magenta and asphaltum. All right, so let's dry that. Um, so <laughs> Yvonne, that's so cute. She said, I've just been shopping. What does W oils mean? So W oils are water soluble oils. Um, Martin F. Weber used to make them, but there are other companies that make them like uh, Windsor and Newton, Cobra. Um, if you've ever painted with the amazing Willow Wolf, she uses the Cobra brand. And um, they are, you can mix and thin the paints with water to get them to move and there are no harsh chemicals. Soap and water cleanup, etc. Okay, now on our flips, what I want you to notice is they're right now they're a little too white, right? They're a little too harsh. So we're gonna outline those and then we will shade them as well. But this is where I wanna show you these little dots. So I'm gonna use like a, you can use a number four or a number two flat brush. Oh, look at all that paint under my finger now. Sorry, guys, that's so gross. Okay, I'm going to keep some water in my brush, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pick up some quinacridone magenta, some asphaltum. Now, if you want them a little darker, you could even do a little touch of Payne's Gray. Oop, that's too much touch. Okay. Now, on these tiger lily, tiger lilies, that's what it reminds me of. On these stargazer lilies, it's very much like a tiger lily where you have these little notches of color. That's a little too much. Paints gray, so I just wiped it off and picked up some more quinacridone magenta. And I'm just going to touch, touch, 
just like that, kind of dab them on. Now, if they're a little too thick, a little too, you know, I'll just do that. You can just touch it. Just kind of touch. So I'm on the chisel edge and I'm like touching that corner, touching that corner, touching that corner. Just very, very light touch. Now, I'm not using a liner brush because a lot of times using a liner brush, you end up with a line. With the flat brush, because I'm sitting and pushing on that corner, I will get a variation in shape. And that's what I want, okay? So they're going to go a little bit more on the edge, lower in the center. Okay. And then it starts to become a stargazer lily, right? It's amazing what these little details all of a sudden just bring it all together. Just like, oh. This is one of my favorite flowers to paint a poppy. And the same thing. Once you get the center of that poppy in, it's like, oh my gosh, that just like happened. It just became what it is. Um, just got to get all those details on. Okay, and I see I'm starting there. I like to start from the inside so I can control how far it goes out. If I come here, sometimes I do it a little too far out. So... I like to start in the center at the base of that petal and work my way up the sides, up the middle to get those little, those little doodad strokes. Okay. It's killing me not to look at the comments right now. <laughs> I promise I will go back. And I think I did see a couple people join my membership group. Thank you so much. When we get done, I will definitely go um, and send you information on getting into the private Facebook group. And um, I will be back tomorrow night here on my Sandy McTeer Designs and my YouTube doing a very quick little tutorial on creating in an art journal, okay? And I will share with you some of my favorite go-to products that I use um, that I have on hand for creating in my art journal, in my decorative painting, in my mixed media, you name it. Like I said, my membership is decorative painting, art journaling, member or, uh, mixed media, and so much more all rolled into one. Um, I mean, the other day we did our tip was on brush care, um, which is important. <laughs> It's important to not do what I do sometimes and leave your brush in the water. Okay, now look how pretty that's starting to come together, right? Oh, love, love, love. All right, so I'm going to rinse. I'm trying to see what did Robin say that everyone is. Um, I don't see it. All righty. Now, let me show you something really quick in here. See how those two lines come together? Don't like that. So I'm going to take my angle brush, take a little bit of plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Let me come here and show you. A little plantation pine, a little bit of asphaltum, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Kind of work that in. And right here, you can come in and kind of just give it a little nudge of color right there. Okay, and just kind of soften that so it doesn't look like two lines converging because they go right into that center. Okay, now this is what I was talking about with your pattern. Let's dry this real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to wing it, but I'm also going to show you how you can put that pattern back on if you need to. And I haven't done my, um, my little highlights along the edge. So I'm gonna take my rigger brush, some water, and I'm gonna get some white on that rigger brush. And I will just strengthen these up just a little. Now, this is what I wanna show you. Let's come to, let's go like to this one right here, okay? So I don't wanna just draw a line with white. I can 
so I kind of sketch it on. Okay, kind of sketch it on instead of drawing, painting a solid line. Um, from here, same thing. I wouldn't want a really harsh line right there, so I can just pull a very soft little line. I'm gonna wipe off my brush, and then I can just soften that line out a little bit or swipe it with my finger. Okay, that will keep you from getting a very defined, outlined look. Um, same thing here, I want to mess this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna come above, And this one comes from here out because it goes down in. Okay, now this little flip here has to continue. But we don't want it to be a solid straight line, so I'm gonna mess it up a little. Okay. Same thing on this one. Kind of come up, oops, made that too thick, come up that edge and just do a little bit of a sketch. Soften, because that petal goes over that petal, right? And we have a stamen there, so you're not gonna see it. Um, same thing on this one, let's go down. And it's, I have water in my brush with some white, and I'm just sketching on this little line. Now, I'm gonna wipe my brush off, come on this side of the line and soften it. If that worries you, just take another brush. Like, um, you know, you could do an angle brush, you could do a flat, and you can just take that right on that line and just soften it. It, it just, to me, um, makes it look less outlined. If you like the outlined look, by all means, leave it. Remember, we still have some dry brushing to do on these too to brighten them up. Okay, so we have our lines on. Let's, oh, forgot that one. Come back to that. And this one has a little wiggle, little wiggle right there, and the flip that goes there. Okay. I'm just gonna soften that with my finger. Alrighty, your pattern. Now, remember what I said in the beginning. <laughs> when I base coat, my petals might become bigger. That does not bother me. If it bothers you, stay within the lines. But I tend to go outside the lines um, and break the rules. Okay? Now, you could line this back up. For the most part, get your general basic area. Okay? You can take transfer paper. Put that underneath and use, let me find, watch, I won't be able to find it. I can't because it's my other workstation. Um, but I have the Uniball um, Signo black pen. Now I'm on my vellum. If I were on my regular paper, I will use my pen, but I don't wanna ruin my vellum. So I'm gonna use a stylus. Okay, so you guys probably have one of these somewhere in your stash. Stylus, different balls on the ends of it, metal balls. And you can just do, no need to do both lines. You can just do a line and your little stamens. That piston right in the middle that's always sappy and gooey and serves its purpose. Okay. So see how you can get that line drawing back on there if you need to. Um, and again, you can always wing it. I said I was gonna wing it, but showing you that, now I have my lines. Um, small brush, like your rigger brush, liner brush. I'm gonna use a number four or a number two. And we're gonna go ahead and get our stamens on there with a little bit of antique green, a little bit of warm white. Mix that together. I don't have any water in my brush. I just have antique green and warm white. 
and you're going to pull those lines. So see, again, no, no need to do two lines. You just pull it right down the center of the one line you drew on. And you're gonna paint those. It might take two coats, but we're gonna do a little shading on them. A little bit of a highlight. And then we've got another one that goes right over there. Okay, now with that same color on a Stargazer Lily, you have these little triangles that come at the base of these petals. So I'm just going to touch it at the base of that petal. And it's just a nice little loose triangle right there. Because we can't see all the bases of the petals, I'm not gonna do it for all of them. Okay, I am gonna do it for this one since you can see that one a little bit more. But I typically will wait and put this on now instead of trying to go around that triangle. That would just be too hard, too aggravating. So antique green, a little bit of warm white, get that on. It's gonna look a little weird till we separate it and shade it. Put a little one back there. Do I have any here? Can't see that one. Uh, I don't have it on my original, but if you could see a little, you might see like a little tip of that triangle there, okay? And again, on my original, I have a shadow there because that's covering. I have this stamen, that stamen, which needs to come down a little. Okay, so let's go ahead and dry those. Thank you, Molly Ann. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Wait till she gets in her drop shadows. Who wrote that? <laughs> Molly Ann, right? I knew it. It was one of my members. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do. And I'm seeing here, I did exactly what I did on my original. I'm gonna show you how to fix that <laughs> uh, when we get done. Um, and what I'm talking about is it just looks like it's laying flat. I wanna lift it a little. And I did that on my original when I was designing it and I will show you how to change that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and take care of our stamens and our the little fuzzy yucky bit on the top is done with a little bit of spiced pumpkin. Um, I used some quinacridone gold. Now, if you don't have this, there really is not a color that goes exactly, or that is a good substitute, I should say. But you can use burnt sienna, all right? But I'm gonna do a little bit of spiced pumpkin, a little bit of quinacridone gold. We have our asphaltum. I'm gonna use this same brush. You can use um, a liner brush if you want to, if you're not comfortable tapping with, this is a number two flat. I don't even think I put this in my instructions, but I love this size. Um, okay, so a little bit of quinacridone gold, a little bit of asphaltum. And we're going to tap, 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 tap. Now, these are kind of arced, and they are um, fuzzy. So we wouldn't want to do something like this. We wouldn't want to just paint that. We want to tap. Tap's gonna give texture and it's gonna give that fluffy appearance of those stamens. Okay, so we're gonna do that for all of them. Except our little piston there. Piston or pistol? That's one of the two. My green thumb mother would know. <laughs> I'm so excited this week I had my orchids are in bloom and my husband moved our plants back out on the porch. We usually bring them in from our big window in the garage um, during the winter. So I have three gorgeous um, amaryllis that just bloomed that I will share pictures with you guys. Okay, so we've got our stamens on. Now, what we wanna do for this little top of this, let me see if somebody wrote, is it piston or pistol? Piston or pistol? <laughs> so a little 
plantation pine and antique green. I'm just going to do this little top. Now it's almost like three little circles, a circle, a circle, a circle. And then I'm just going to slide that right down the stem. Pick up a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm going to take that same brush, that same color, and I'm just going to slide that down the stems. Not really trying to, you know, go on one side or the other. I just want to get a little more color on there. Okay, and then on these, you definitely want to add a little bit of that plantation pine and antique green on those. as well. Do I have any where a little tip there? Okay. Pistol, I believe. And the piston is for your <laughs> mechanic. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. I knew it was something. It's a pistol. <laughs> oh my goodness, Heather, you had snowflakes in New York? No, thank you. It is 75 degrees here right now and beautiful. Okay, now on those little, um, the toppers on those stamens, if you didn't get them dark enough the first time, you can always go back, add a little bit more. We don't want them to be see-through, but you know, I don't want them to be black either. Like, hello, that's a little too dark. Quinacridone gold, a little bit of asphaltum. Again, give them a little bit of a, some movement, an arc. You know, they're not just straight across. Okay, rinse that. Now let's dry brush a little. So I'm gonna to come to my um, Mezzaluna brush. Now remember, we dry brushed on our stem and our leaves. And I'm gonna use the same color, but I wanna show you a trick with these brushes, or any brush for that matter. Um, if you wanna get the paint out of it, a little hand sanitizer. Work it in, wipe it off. See how much paint still in there? Okay, so I come back and I pick up a little bit more, work it in, wipe it off. So I don't wet them. I use hand sanitizer to clean between colors if I need to go to like a light. So I don't want green in my brush if I wanna do just a white highlight. Um, so hand sanitizer is a great way to get that out. And I just keep doing that until I have no color in my brush, all right? So, is this gonna be a three hour? I think so, we gotta finish on Facebook though because I think, I think they cut me off at a certain point. Okay, so same brush, I'm gonna load up a little bit of um, antique green, matcha green, and some white. And I wanna work that in somewhere. Antique green, matcha green, and white. And I wanna wipe that off. And I want to dry brush a little on my pistol here on the um, chisel edge of that brush. If you don't have a great chisel edge on that brush, use, um, use like the chisel edge of a flat brush, okay? And you're gonna highlight those. I'm gonna switch to this number two flat Add a little bit better, there we go. A Little bit better highlight there. Touch it with your finger. Okay, so in my original, I used my Mezzaluna. I just switched to a number two flat. Um, and that paint's moving much better for me, so. And then we have to shade it. A little highlight on that triangle. Okay, so let's go to our stamens first. I'm gonna take my rigger brush or a liner brush you have, and we'll pick up some quinacridone gold and some spiced pumpkin and a touch of warm white. So quinacridone gold, spiced pumpkin, a touch of warm white, tap, tap, tap. Any excess, you can swipe it across your paper towel to get rid of, but I just wanna highlight and when I'm highlighting, I don't wanna cover up everything underneath. So tap, 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 tap. And I always start where it's gonna be the brightest. 
Tap, 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 tap. Let it kind of dissipate to nothing. And tap, 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 tap. Okay, so we've got those on. And you can continue to add, you know, and brighten those. If you wanted to make them a little bit brighter, you could do the um, same combination with a little white. Um, I love, I love, love, love pink and green together. I mean, excuse me, pink and orange together. I love pink and green too, but um, that little orange that was in this picture that I saw was just, I don't know, it was just so pretty. It added like exactly that spark of highlight it needed, okay? If you do what I did here, which is I covered up too much of the base with all those highlights, come in with your base color. And just add some back in. All right. Okay, we'll do a little shading there and then we're gonna move on to our drop shadows, my favorite part. So I'm gonna use my quarter inch angle a little bit of plantation pine on my quarter inch angle, plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's gray. Plantation pine, oops, hello. A little bit of Payne's gray. Oops. All right, so right in here, I am gonna add a little bit of a shadow on that triangle. Need, where's my color? Um, I do want to add a little bit of shading where these stamens meet. Again, little plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray, where that stamen overlaps. Just to separate them a little bit more. Like that. And then right there in that center, remember that center point is where, you know, again, we want to be able to stick our finger down in there. So I need to darken that a little with some quinacridone magenta and some asphaltum and I want to go over that triangle over that to soften that look and deepen that shading okay I'll take that same color combination and right along the base of some of these highlights I like to tone those down just a bit because of course they wouldn't all be white, right? You'd have some reflection of the color that's around it. So I just, I don't want to say mess it up, but I do add a little bit of color so that it's not white from the start to the finish. And I think you can see that again, if you've got the pattern packet, you'll be able to see that. Okay, let's zoom in right here because this is what I was talking about. See how the petal looks like it goes flat? Like it just goes, uh, this one is more lifted. So let me show you how to do that. Come in with that angle brush. Pick up on the toe, some green, some Payne's Gray. Work that in on the toe of the brush only. Okay, right up underneath here, I can do a divot of color on my runway there. I can do a divot of color, come down, come down, and then right here, I wanna lift a little bit more. Okay, so that will help lift that petal and move it so that when you go to put your white highlight back on it, which I'll do right here, It's not flat like it was before. Hello. <laughs> Smudge that white. Get back in there. I want to make that little loop right there. Okay. And then I did mention it, but... Um, I don't feel like I need it on this one like I did my original, 
But if you wanted to make the edges a little bit brighter, you can come in with a, your Mezzaluna brush with a little bit of white, that's too much, and dry brush a little bit of white on just a couple areas, not every area. Like I said, here, there, but not everywhere. Okay, so you can do a little there. There you can do a little on that piston if you want. Piston, that pistol, and I need to shade that. It's looking bad. Um, but this is where you can, you know, dry brush a little bit of those brighter, whiter highlights on, like I have here. Okay. Shading on here. And then we'll get on to our <laughs> um, cast shadows. Again, one of my favorite, favorite things to do. So it has a little topper on it. So we have to separate that top from the um, line, the stick, the stem. So we need a little bit of shading underneath there. And we'll just pull that right down. And then a little bit of shading on the edges of those circles just to bring them in just a little. Then I just kind of touch it with my finger and leave it like that. It's detail without it being detail, detail, right? I mean, this is not realistic realism. This is decorative painting, fun, mixed media with our stencils and our stamps. Okay, now let's do some drop shadows. I'm gonna stay right up here and I'm gonna go to my um, number four flat. Well, actually this is a five. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a five and I wanna get it wet. I want to come over to my palette, pick up a touch of Payne's Gray, and then I want to work that in. Make it nice and thin and inky, okay? Now, if you go straight to your piece, you might disappoint yourself. It might be too dark, so I always suggest try it somewhere else. I usually will do it on a piece of paper um, to see if it's too dark. That actually I think is good. I might need to bump it up for camera, but what you want to think about is like just that shadow. And so if I have a shadow here that goes underneath that petal, right, from there, I'd have a little bit of that tip showing as well, which would come away from that petal. So same thing here. I could do a shadow underneath that part of the petal. Let me make that a little bit darker so that you can see. A little bit darker there, a shadow right here, and I keep going because that shadow is going to cast a shadow right on that center part, right? Okay, so we have a little bit here, underneath here. Now, I wouldn't go all the way around, but I could come up here and do to there, that little guy showing. And then I love to do them like for our stamens. Do a little bit. You're mimicking the shape of what it is that you're, that's casting a shadow. Okay, so a little underneath there. And then the little lines. Bring those away from what's casting the shadow. That's going to lift it more for you than if you just float a shadow right next to it. Okay, so have those little shading shadow lines. Oops, too dark. I feel like this one got a little too light. So I always layer. If I feel like it got a little too light, come back and add a little bit darker, but let it completely dry before you do so. Okay, so that's for our flower. Now let's come down here. And I do like to come away from the stem just a little. Especially right here. We'll come away from the stem. Can you see? Nope, because I'm off camera. <laughs> Let's zoom in. Okay, so we'll bring that right down. 
Oops, see how it's not moving for me? It's not moving. I need a little bit more moisture in there. Okay, now since we're down here, let's go ahead and take care of our butterfly. And for that, I like to do, again, low and mimicking the shape of those wings. The little body, that wing, and then the antennas. So just the chisel edge of that brush to get those little antennas. Now let's come up to our leaves. And again, keeping with that, um, you can use a bigger brush too if you wanna pull out, you know, like to a bigger area. I'm just gonna push on this brush a little bit harder to get that cast shadow on. And I might need to do another little stroke right there. Okay. And then over here, this guy comes down. And then you'd have a little shadow right here. In fact, I came back with some Payne's Gray right here and I made this really, really dark, like it was the back of the leaf. All right, so let's zoom out just a little so you can get the whole vibe of that cast shadow and how it lifts. This one got a little dark. So let me, that's something I don't know that I've um, shared with you guys. If I do it where it's a little dark and it's light inside, I there's really no way you can fix it other than to do another layer. But if it's already too dark, it's just gonna get darker, right? So what I would do is take my base color, paint a little bit of a wash, let it dry and redo my cast shadow. Okay, so, and then sometimes you'll mess up something else like that. But at least you know how to fix it. If you're like, oh, I don't know, I, it's too dark, don't like that, use your background color, paint a wash, dry it, and you can put that cast shadow right back on. Okay, so let's dry that. I think that is probably it. I think we have our, let's zoom out just a little, our highlights on. Um, look at, this is my original, looking to see if I, um, a little bit of green gold, antique green, excuse me, matcha green, little touch of warm white. I am going to come in and fix up some of these little flips that I messed up, but again, sketchy. So it doesn't look outlined. Cause I like how bright they are on my original. There we go. And maybe a little there. Again, slide on that chisel edge, but then just very sketchy. All right. Brighten any brighter, you know, any highlights that need to be brighter, any shading that needs to be darker to fix up your piece. All right, guys, I think we're done. Um, do I see a couple things I could tweak? Yes, I, I want to make this a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to do a wash of some warm white over it. Um, or I could even dry brush some white, but I'm pleased with that. I'm liking the way that that's coming together and looking. So, um, all right, let me look real quick. Thanks for another class. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks for being here. Hi, Julie. The drop shadows are just such an amazing finish touch, finishing touch. Brenda Wright, I mean, other than my highlights and my shadows, my drop, the drop shadows I do, to me, just takes it to another level. You know, it makes things stand up. 
instead of just being, you know, having floated color around it. That separates it. A cast shadow makes it stand up and separates it even more. So it's a finishing touch I love to do all the time, as my members will tell you. <laughs> it gets me super duper excited. Um, and so, yeah, I'm pleased with those. I'm pleased that they came out very similar, which isn't my usual. Um, all right, guys, it's 540. Have a fantastic week. Don't forget, if you have any questions at all, I'm going to pop this up again for you. Um, on my membership group. It is open. The doors are open until Wednesday at midnight. If you're interested in joining and you need more information, please do not hesitate to reach out to me um, through my website or Sandy McTeer Designs at AOL.com. I'm happy to answer any questions. Would love to have you join us um, and paint with us um, monthly, more so than my Sandy McTeer Designs or my Sandy McTeer Sundays in the studio with Sandy on my Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page. How about that? I'll slow down. <laughs> I get so excited. Can you tell? Um, I will be out of town. I'm going to NAMTA Creativation on Thursday, and I will be demoing Friday, not Friday, Saturday, Sunday through the week next week to the, um, I think, Tuesday. We'll share as much as I can with you guys, new product, um, yeah, fun, fun, fun stuff, especially lots from the decor art booth because that's where I'm going to be. Cannot wait to see my friend Mark Montano and I'm hoping Ken Oliver's there and Jamie from the um, Crafters Workshop and just so many people I cannot wait to see. And Veronica from Dynasty Brush, hello, how could I forget? And I think Jelly Bean's going to be there and Anna Marie Oak. Um, I'm going to share as much as I possibly can without being let go from my job. <laughs> No, I'm there to work, but at the same time, I want to share and bring you guys as much as I can. So I will do that. And um, again, if I missed, I promise I will go back and look. Anyone that joined the membership group, thank you so very much. I will send you all your information to get into the group and join us, especially for Tuesday's lesson. Um, and then all the other lessons and all the other fun things that are there. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great week. Get those brushes out. Get that paint out. Again, you can get this e-packet, instructional packet line drawing on my website. But even if you don't want to paint this, paint something. Do something creative. I promise you, the more you do it, the more you'll do it. Okay? It's proven. All right. Have a great one. Talk to y'all later. Bye.